Hello, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my name is Dr. Sahar Afshan, and today the topic that I'll be discussing with you is biased statistics. Um, this is my, I, I believe, third lecture in community medicine. And today I was very interested to start this topic because um, right now we are in COVID-19 crisis. And everybody's talking about the research that is going on, the, the curves that we are talking about, the procedures. We are all talking about epidemiology and the procedures relating to it. So uh, biostatics is, is one of the major concepts, is one of the major subjects that covers epidemiology. And without the sense and, and knowledge of basic at least uh, biostatics, we cannot understand research, epidemiology, or community medicine fundamentals. Biostatics is basically um, a more of a calculation-based subject, but uh, from a fourth-year medical uh, students point of view uh, we're going to be talking about the basic fundamentals and definitions uh, in the next and next time I'll be talking about biostatics calculations how do we do it and the formulas that we use uh, why is is okay so we'll start with with biostats um, why is what is bio bio means life and statistics means sat, science of facts and figures why is it so important from a, uh, from a medical professional's point of view it is important because um, not just today, throughout your life, you're going to be leading and conducting researches, reading articles, journals, and we're going to be coming across a lot of data. In order to interpret data, the data is entirely based on biostats calculation. Uh, in order to interpret that data, we need to understand how did we get those results? Because on, on the basis of that data and calculation, we reach a hypothesis, we reach a conclusion uh, of a study. So we need to understand the fundamentals of, of biostats and the calculation in order to read that paper, in order to understand the calculation, the procedure that was followed. Um, how was the data collected? Uh, what was the procedure that followed it? What was the calculations that came into uh, play for the result that we got? So keeping in mind the concept of biostats from a medical professional point of view, you really need to understand the basics science of collection, quantification, interpretation of data, and all the vital limits, analysis of data. So for that, biostats is very important. Now, we're going to be coming across a lot of um, terms and definitions and terminology when we are reading a paper, and especially when, when it comes to those tables that we see during a research paper. So some of the terms I would like you to be familiar with it from, from the point of view of 40 medical students. And those terms would be, uh, for example, parameter. Parameter is a very common uh, term that we use in, in research and papers and while conducting studies that it is the mean of a population. What is a population? Population is, is, is uh, that group of people, is that, that number of people that we are studying. For example, 100 male, um, 100 children, um, 100 is a rather small number, uh, depending on whatever number, that particular male age between 60 to 70, children age between 5 to 10. So that is the population. Any specific group of people that we are focusing to study, that is called a population in the research paper, all right, or in the studies that we are conducting research studies that we are conducting. So population is a very common word you're gonna be coming across. So parameter is what? The mean of the population. How do we calculate mean? Normally known as the average of a population. Suppose 10, what is the average of 10 people? So we're gonna be um, having those values and dividing it by 10. There's a basic formula, but formulas we're gonna be doing it in the next chapter. So just to know the average of the population, the group of people, the group that we are conducting study over is the parameter. Sample statics, again, any single characteristic of it. For example, male, uh, for example, a certain age group, children, um, for example, senior citizens, um, above 60, or uh, geographically we can divide it, um, African uh, uh, descendants, or Hispanic, Latin, um, depending on geography, any characteristic on the basis of which we, we define uh, that, that uh, 
population, that sample is called that sample statics. What is the notion? Any fixed value. Um, when it comes to calculation, we come across a lot of figures. Uh, we come across figures that are in decimals, especially in biostats. I got you're going to be coming across 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, in calculations next time we do the sessions, when we do the session of calculations, you're going to be coming across. So we come across a lot of small fraction of numbers as well. But in terms of constant, constant, any fixed value. By fixed value, we usually mean a whole number. 10 people or uh, 25 year old or blood pressure uh, BP that is systolic uh, 110 by uh, diastolic 80 any fixed value that we are talking about so that's called the constant value in biostatics variables now variable is, is something very very important and uh, you're going to be coming across a lot when you're going to be talking about your, to your professors about if you are interested in uh, being medical students conducting a study. So what the first thing that the professor will ask you is the population. Like what population do you want to conduct study? Now, um, if we talk about in terms of specifically in terms of research paper, because this is what nowadays uh, students are doing and, and because of COVID-19, we're coming across this sort of scenario a lot. So we're going to be talking in this concept in this uh, context. So first of all, we do the hypothesis. For example, um, let's do a hypothesis that you being medical students of fourth year, you are conducting a study that is physical activity has an impact on mental health of the students. It's a very interesting topic and I would like to um, conduct a study someday in your college as well, in my college, I would say. So it's a very common, but it has a it, it's still, a, it, it, it has a lot of potential for research. So for example, physical activity is one, and our hypothesis is medical students or students aged between 20 to 25, how does physical activity impact their mental health? That is their ability to perform. What is mental health? Their ability to perform in the class in terms of grade, their ability to correlate um, to the people, uh, around them, their ability to have relationships uh, with their friends and family, their ability to, to understand their emotions. So are they in a good, does physical activity has a positive impact on mental health of students age 20 to 25? So the, this is the hypothesis that we have. So once you, what is the population would be? Now in this scenario, in this hypothesis, what would be the population students 20 to 25 we have a sample uh, population we have something in mind when conducting studies you need to be very specific in your details what do you want how old what time what place what type these are very important we're going to be talking about it in detail so for example this is what i'm saying so the first thing that the professor the teacher once you take your your hypothesis to the teacher or the professor that you you can or in the future you're conducting study, who's gonna ask you what variables are you gonna use? What do you mean by variables? Variables are those characteristics that you are gonna be studying, evaluating, on the basis of which you would get your result. So variables are, are very important and they need to be chosen very wisely. And they need to have strong association with your hypothesis. For example, if we are conducting mental health studies, uh, impact on mental health. So what are we, we going to be considering? What variables are we going to use? We're going to be using the academic performance of the student. That is the GPA is the variable here. Uh, number of friends, that is the variable here. Uh, fatigue would be a variable. Are they, are they active in class activities? Are, are they lazy? Number of classes attended. Um, during the whole year, that is the variable. Anything that is associated to that hypothesis that would define or include the hypothesis is the variable. That what now this is one related to this hypothesis on a general height, age, uh, male, female, even the characteristics, these are all variables. Any any uh, pre existing illness, you're gonna be coming across a lot of if suppose uh, cancer patients. Did they have diabetes? Did they have hypertension? How old were they? What uh, race did they belong to? Uh, all these are variables. What 
variables you're going to be using. So variable population are very common that you're going to be seeing in research papers. When you see the tables in the research paper, you're going to be seeing the variables and their calculation. So variable is very important. Now, what is data? Of course, any, 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 uh, when we are conducting a study, data, uh, especially in community medicine, that is public health, data is the basis of it. Hypothesis is an idea, right? Um, I want to do this, okay? Why do you want to do this is the hypothesis, all right? And then uh, we get the hypothesis, how would you do this is the next question. How would you do this? That's through the variables, right? What will you get out of it is the data. So everything is just interconnected in, in a very uh, good sequence, if you understand it. It's not something big. They just dots to it. So the next thing that comes after the variable is the data. What will you conclude or how would you conclude out of the variables? So that is the data. What is the data? Collection of observation in a scientific way or collection of observations um, in a pattern in a certain way. For example, um, the source of data that we get through questionnaires, surveys normally use are questionnaires. Um, you must be getting a lot of uh, questionnaires through in the email, um, through your phone, phone calls, interviews. Um, in, in college, I remember when we conducted a study in fourth year, in community medicine, we, we did a survey through, uh, through questionnaires and we distributed those papers throughout in the college uh, to get the data that we wanted. So those are all sources of data. Census, census is specifically used for calculating population. Uh, it's, it's because these are types of data and the sources of data, how many people, uh, male, female, um, age-wise, so that is census, typically related to people. Survey is related to variables, all right? Official records, you can get data from the hospital record. You can get data from registrar offices, depending on your hypothesis, depending on the subject that you are researching. Suppose you're conducting a research study in a hospital and um, you want to have, it's something related to new needs and you want to have a record of, of uh, uh, let's say, low birth weight babies and what uh, what's the reason behind it. Um, Okay, make it a hypothesis like, um, uh, is low birth weight related to maternal age? Um, that, that's a very common issue. What is related to low birth? So for that, what you, you can't just go out and giving out questionnaires to parents. You would need official records, birth records. You would need hospital records. So that, that is a source of data as well. So, so any way by which you could collect your information, your data is basically the information. So once you collect the data, I have the information, right? First, let, let's take it one after the other again. So the first was question, I have an idea. So what is the idea? It's the hypothesis. Your idea is your hypothesis. Um, what did we say? Um, how would you do that hypothesis? How would you justify your idea? We need variables for it. Um, how will the, what will the variables do? They will give me result. By what? By data. How will we collect the data? We have sources of data, survey, census, records, records, hospital data. Yeah. Now data, once we got the stuff, it, it's like you have the ingredients. Uh, now you need to understand, it's like cooking a dish, right? So you need to understand what ingredients, uh, what are fruits, what are vegetables, uh, how would you cut them? How would you put them together to get the result that you want? So we need to identify what is that data? What type of data do we have? It's basically a stepwise approach to your conclusion to the end of your hypothesis. So there are two types of data, quantitative and qualitative, right? Quantitative is fixed numbers, right? And qualitative is usually characteristic, uh, something that we cannot really define it. So for qualitative, you see it's numbers, fixed in numbers, anything that has a typical um, constant number with it, for example, temperature, height, um, weight, BMI, um, number of visits, hours of sleep, anything that could be counted in numbers 
and could be presented in numbers. Qualitative data is, is a characteristic. Um, for example, here we have texture. Uh, was it soft? Was it rough? Or, um, mm, or we can talk about um, taste, bitter, sweet, uh, anything that defines a characteristic weather. So again, the, we have, when we talk about data, so we, we talked about two types of the qualitative and quantitative. So quantitative by quantity, that is considered as the numerical data, right? Anything that has numbers or we could count in numbers or present in numbers, fixed number. The next is categorical, that is qualitative. Uh, yes or no, male or female, one or two in terms of number. It is not a fixed value, but a characteristic, but um, a property that we need to present in a data, right? Um, let's make it more simple. For example, the two types of quantitative, now, now previously in this, if we, if, we, if we see the numerical or the quantitative, the two type of data, continuous and discrete, uh, counts are discrete, and measurements are continuous. Now we further go, go into detail. Numbers we talked about, the quantity, anything that is fixed with a value. Now, uh, discrete and continuous. Continuous measurements, right? Um, measurements could be simplified, that are in decimal, that we could present any value in decimal. Simpler, smaller, finer forms. Uh, 0 0.001, because this is what we get a lot of ratios out of it. We got a, we get a lot of, uh, um, for example, okay, take it height or take it, uh, let me go on something more simple. Uh, okay, for example, for counts, how many people number, uh, they were 100, they were 200. It's a, uh, a meeting attended by 100 people. Uh, we cannot say it was 100.5 people. It is 100. It cannot go further than that. It has to be a whole number. The number of flowers in the vase, um, 10 flowers. It cannot be 10 and a half. It cannot be, I think, almost 10. No, it has to be a fixed number. About by measurement, normally, we can say that it's continuous data. We can say height was 53.3 or weight was 53.3 kg, almost 54. Something that could vary. Something we can talk about in, in, in decimals or uh, in fraction form, okay? So usually measurements that are weighed through scales or, or um, and, and other weighing machines or anything that through a scale is considered as continuous data. As I said, continuous data can be divided and reduced to finer forms. It could be point, 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 zero, one. Uh, it could be almost one. Anything that goes into, into smaller uh, decimals is continuous. But anything that is fixed, number, constant, that is where we use the term constant, is the count, the discrete data. On the other hand, and now we're going to be talking about the qualitative. Um, like we said, the the characteristic, um, the other data that is the metadata that is the characteristic um, of, of the data that we get. For example, they, we have to, normally when you, if, you, if generally speaking, we come across a lot of questionnaires um, which say right or wrong or surveys that say true or false, right? Um, I accept this, I reject this, uh, no or yes, uh, true or false. So that is the binary data. It gives you two, two options in form of affirmation and, and, and deferral, like I do not agree to it. So that is normally the binary data. Again, because it does not have a number, but it has a value. If yes, then it has a value. If no, it has a value in terms of survey and data. Do I agree that students should take part in physical activities? Yes or no? If, if we talked about the earlier hypothesis. So we would say yes. Now that yes has a value. It, it's not that it was a stupid question. No, it's a very relevant question. But that is not a number. 
it's it's a quantity it's it's a characteristic with a value so it's a qualitative data and uh, similarly we come across another type of data in surveys and questionnaires and interviews uh, during the research period that is ordinary data how well did you for example how well do you sleep at night in terms of again the hypothesis that we are talking about students is is mental health affected by the physical activity of the students um, so if there's a question there uh, do you sleep how well do you sleep at night then we're going to be had i sleep very well i sleep i don't sleep at all uh, i don't know um, so all these are gonna be in terms of an order in terms of an order right so you can answer accordingly for example um if you grade on on a scale of one to ten uh, how do you think is the performance of your professor um this teacher how would you create that teacher it's going to be a scale between one to ten so anything that gives you a value uh in terms of a scale no matter it's small smaller or smallest or tall medium small um anything but in an ascending order do you get it or in a descending order anything that is in an order uh one to ten is an order so anything in the form of an, of an ascending order or a descending order it's called ordinal data again this data does not have any number but its value is going to add up to the survey or the data that we are collecting so that was a general talk now in terms from the examination point of view and, and in pakistan we come across this a lot what is census so so what is census census is an unofficial count or survey of the population so population it is typically census is used for collecting data for population mardam shumari jo hamari alag se use kiya jata hai now why is it so important it's very important when you when you talk about community health and public health hum bhi jab bachche the hum sochte the kyun aage ye puchne ke liye unko kya fark padta hai ya aaj inko yaad aa raha hai no actually fark padta hai aur bahut fark padta hai from economy to health factors to social determinants everything depends on census of a country the kitne log hai from from the covered area that they they take to the health facilities that are there. so it's very important so examination point of view examination access census ka ek question aata hai what is census and why is it important so population estimate now there are two types of census mardam shumari bhi ghar ghar ja ke ki jati hai house to house that's enumeration method jo hamare yahan typically pakistan mein use hota hai na ghar pe koi aata hai to ye darwaza aap mein kitne log hai and the other one is handed to uh, in the form of questionnaires uh, to a family member ke um ye ek bade kisi ko ghar ke bol diya ji aapke kitne log hain ye hamari yahan ye bhi use hota hai so we use there's a third option that i said i didn't run the line here is combination of two what in pakistan is used in combination ghar ghar ja ke bhi count karte hain ki kitne hain bahar bula de log kitne hain ya kisi ghar ke ek fard se puch liya jata hai ki how many people do you have at your place in order to count the number of people again what is this this is discrete data um this cannot be infraction it is a fixed constant value of a population but a population of a country population of a country in in biostats every detail is very important because it changes the face of 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 the hypothesis it changes the entire meaning of of your calculation so census is typically associated with population so de facto is is the person counted at the place from suppose somebody is it's usually used in europe that they say that the de facto census is is a type of that means somebody is going through work and they just stop in there and they ask okay you one person what is his name your details they count them him as one the other is pers the the one that we use is dj or uh that is we people in our community they go from house to house in order to count people according to their place of residence ek ghar mein kitne log hain how many people are there at your house so that's an important information regarding examination you would probably get an question on it or two 
So another, okay, now we'll go back to what you're doing. We collected the data, great. Now we know what, what is quantitative, what is qualitative. We know what we are trying to find out through the hypothesis, what we're looking for, the variables, everything. We've got a certain set of information here. Now the idea is when it comes to presenting, how would you present it on a piece of paper? You know it, I know it, but we need to present it. We need to tell the world that, okay, we we have a, a set of information and we have a certain calculations here. So we need to tell them. Now the, the person normally reading or understanding so the set of data is usually presented in an understandable figure. Uh, and that is the requirement of biostatics. Biostatics is, is presented in two ways. One is through figures and the other is, is through um, tables of calculation. So through tables, uh, biostat is, is, sorry, one is collected through, through the data information the, and it is presented through tables. So what we have here, tables, charts, or diagrams. So normally, the ones that we see in our practice, and especially from, a, from, from students' point of view, what are we going to do here is we are going to be presenting uh, our information in the form of tables. What is a table? Table with rows and columns. A set of information presented with rows and call horizontal lines and vertical lines. That is called rows and columns. Simple, basic maths. Frequency distribution is set of data in groups. Suppose um, a set of information in groups. Um, population, um, male with diabetes, that is one group. Female with diabetes in another group. So that is female with diabetes, two information, set of data, in one, in, in one group. Males with diabetes is another set of data in the other group, and these two would be called frequency distributions. So we frequently distributed our data and presented it through tables. Um, I have an example of age is another factor. How to determine the groups? Now, how would you determine the groups? The number of groups. Right? Because we, when, when we are presenting our information, our data by tables, we need to form groups, right? So how would you, would you uh, how many groups like rows and columns would you find? How, how would you make that? So normally, starting from five, for smaller data and goes to 20 or above, for bigger data. Right. It's 12, it's, it's 1 a.m. here. Anyway, so group intervals is equals to what is how to calculate range. So we would what we would do is calculate range first. That is the minimum value and the maximum. Suppose here I would give an example. Normally, how to determine the groups that we determine is um, a bunch of kids uh, with different age groups. We have ten kids, age 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, hmm? and somebody tells you how do you uh, present it in a form of data. This could be a very interesting question. So how would you present that? 10 children, different age groups. How would you present them in the data? Right, there has to be a, you can't just, just put them anywhere, right? There has to be a way to, to determine that. So first of all, we would calculate the range. Suppose there's a kid who is, is 12 years old and there's a kid, uh, the maximum in the middle from five to 12. So we would, what we would do is, is minus 12, from five, so we get a range, right? Uh, we get a range of seven, I guess seven, right? Yeah, seven. So now how would we divide group intervals? Range, seven divided by desired number. Suppose we want five groups, if we are saying it's a small group. So seven divided by five, that would be one point something. So we can just go for two groups um, in order to make it whole. Um, that is each group, two kids, right? So we would make that uh, if even if, if even numbers. So that is 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 an interesting formula, a very simple one. You might be getting a question on it from examination point of view. That if you have a set of data, how would you define it in in groups? So that remember this this how to calculate. We need to calculate range, maximum value to the minimum value and then divided by the desire 
number of probes. Normally five that we use uh, because it's easier to, to understand and depending on whatever the bigger data we have accordingly. Now in terms of, of, of um, okay, we'll start with, with this first. In terms of figures, one is, is numbers, a set of data and numbers. Tick, 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 7.5, 2.3, whatever, age or whatever, that is a okay. The other biostatics way of presenting data is definitely through figures and that is charts. Um, nowadays that we are reading, the other day I was reading COVID, uh, the curve that we talked about. What is that curve? It's a chart, right? It's a presentation of data. It has an x-axis and a y-axis that def defines pretty much what you're looking for. So that is a set of data. That, so that is in the form of figures. So bar chart is the simplest way of presenting data, uh, especially from fourth year medical point of view. You are going to be coming across bar charts a lot, and you should have the knowledge. I think at fourth year level, bar chart knowledge is a must. So what is bar chart? Uh, it's, it's the simplest way of presenting data in forms of of, of lines and the length of the lines and the length of those vertical walks they determine uh, the quantity of the data right so what are bar charts data by length of simple bars uh, it can be vertical and horizontal as well some of the data we have it longitudinally right and some we have it vertically so it can be vertical or horizontal what determines its value the length the longer overhead has a bigger value, the smaller it has a smaller value. And what does it determine? One type of data, because it has only two axes with one simple bar chart, age versus height, that we normally see in pediatrics practice. Um, for, for every age, there's a set of height. So that is one type of data that we are calculating. That is height according to age. What is multiple well? Here's an example of multiple bar. Um, a group of bars presenting a set of data. Four children, uh, different heights, um, different ages at a certain time. There's a third factor involved in it. This is your time or another. So that is why we use first bars. Component bars, component are, are single bar, but divided into uh, different quality quantities. It's a single bar, but with, for example, here we have science law. So again, the length of the bar determines the value, but um, it's three information in one vertical, one bar. And vertical bar, okay. The next that we come across a lot is pie chart. I mean, I think pie chart is something that we should know very well and it's the simplest information. Um, fourth year should be using this. Um, it, it's a very simple way of presenting information. A circle that presents data. Again, in pie chart, the only, only thing that is different from the rest of the data that we present is usually the pie chart is represented in the form of a percentage. Because 360, we take it as 100%. And whatever the information we have, we usually um, present it in the form of a percentage. 10%, 20%, if you see different pie charts, I think I have it, see here as well, is, is a percentage, normally by chart is presented. But again, each segments represent the fraction of the information that we have, we have gathered the calculation, the result that we got, again, in the form of a percentage. There are other, other data as well, uh, bar charts, scattered data, curves and all, but that are not very relevant from fourth year point of view. We can go in detail if somebody requests them and I would be happy to provide that information. But these are some of the very basic information of Biostat. The fourth, from a fourth year student point of view, understanding basics and fundamentals of research paper in order so that you can read it and you can interpret it um, easily. So this was the basic concepts of it. The next uh, chapter I'll be doing with Biostat is going to be calculation. Suppose we have a value of a chart. How did you get that value? We got that value because of a certain formula. And those calculations could be overwhelming, I guess they're kind of complicated, but we'll try to simplify it and put it back, uh, put it together in a simple way. And nowadays, Excel sheet is normally used. I don't know how is it being used there back home, but from examination point of view, we will do the very basics, calculating mean, median, um, range, standard deviation, uh, basic um, uh, charts, some of the uh, T value, Z value, what is it about? 
and how to understand it and to interpret it at least you could start reading if not applying you should understand when you are reading research papers okay i got this by this and everything should make sense to you okay uh, so this education activity is supported by jsmu apna uh, alumni and uh, i thank you all for giving me this opportunity i would also like to offer i also said previously any of the students who would like to um have any um, any questions information regarding fourth year examination of community medicine or any general question regarding family medicine uh you can contact me on my email address not a very relevant here it doesn't show show very nicely here but it's sahar.ramesh2017 at gmail.com um you can always contact me i'm always available for your help anything um uh, it would be a great privilege thank you for giving the opportunity and we will do part 2 by stats calculation next time so thank you